All right, my man, state your name. Let them know you on Nicovelli TV. Hey, how's it going? My name is Francisco. This is for Nicovelli TV, and we're about to talk uh, New York Knicks for a little bit. Okay, now, you're a Knicks fan. According to the gear, I see you wearing it, yeah, doing Mr. your Kevin thing. Yeah, Knox the second. Um, I got to say, man, you know, Knox is a young guy. We expected a little bit more out of him. He's still young. Hopefully, uh, you know, we can get a little more out of him. Uh, he's not in the bubble. You know, the Knicks are not in the bubble right now, but... How you feel about that, by the way, the Knicks not being in the playoffs? Was it expected, or did you expect the Knicks to have a postseason? I mean, With I, the I, names that was on the roster? No, for my Knicks, I always expect my Knicks to be in the postseason, you know what I mean? But sometimes it just doesn't come all together. Uh, but I love my Knicks, I'm here for my Knicks, and I'm just hoping that you know they can figure it out. They just uh, sign a coach, uh, Thurband, I believe his name is. Uh, Huge deal. Dibs? Yes, yes. How uh, you feel about that? I think, uh, I mean, I think David Fisdale's... Uh, he's no longer with us. Yeah, he's no longer with us. You know, I think it was too short-lived. Um, I was expecting a lot from him, too, being that he worked with LeBron and Lee Wade back in the heat. But, you know, uh, I'm hoping to see something positive, something big come out of this. Now, how do you feel about Mike Miller? Being that Mike Miller was the coach from the G League and he came in to uh, fill in the, the void that the Knicks had concerning the head coach. I mean... He did what he could. I mean, at the end of the, at the end of the year, um, they didn't have a winning record. Um, but again, it was you know you, you can't expect him to do a lot with what he was given to. So I mean, and it was again it was short, something short lived as well. So, okay. Now, yeah. have you heard the news about Mike Woodson being the assistant coach for the New York Knicks? I have not. I have not. Yes, I, I he is Mike the assistant. Was. So Mike Woodson's back. He was the head coach, I believe, in 2012 when we had Carmelo Anthony. Yes. And that was the last time the Knicks went to the postseason. Yeah, that was that was the last time they had a winning season, I think. Absolutely. 50 plus wins. So, how do you feel about him being the assistant coach? I think that he's got familiarity with, you know, the organization. He's been there before. He knows the in and outs of the, uh, of the back office and all that. I think he can be a really big help for the new head coach. Okay. Yeah. Now, when we speak of players... Like R.J. Barrett, what come to mind? R.J. Barrett, man, really young guy. Um, athleticism's there. I, you know, Canadian. Right. You know, um, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that he can bring the spark that the, the Knicks need. Yeah. Do you like the position he plays? Some. Um, well, small forward, shooting guard, if I'm not mistaken. Right. right? Um, I mean, he's definitely cut out. I mean, he's got the athleticism, he's got the body, he's got the speed. Um, he can create his own shot. So. You know, I, uh, I I think he's I think he's good. I think he's a really good player, and I'm very glad we have him on our team. Okay, if you could critique his game, what is something you would say that RJ oh, Barrett his, needs? Oh, his passing. Uh, he's definitely got to work a little bit on his passing, I think. Um, but I would say his passing, and he's just maybe got to get a little bigger, a little more muscular. Okay. You know, got to put some pounds on to guard the uh, small forwards from the league right now. Okay. But, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I, again, I think he's a hell of a talent, and I think he's going to do really well. All right. And being that we got a defensive coach in Thibs, yeah. right, how do you think that was going to play with a point guard we have in Frank Nilakina? Frank Nilakina. Um, that's very good because Nilakina is a pass-first point guard. Right. Um, so I think you're going to have to mix and match it. I mean, his athleticism's there. The passing's there. He's got a good jump shot. He's not afraid to drive in. His athleticism is really good. Um, you know, he can shoot free throws with the best of them. So maybe they can figure something out there. Um, you know, shake the system up a little bit. I think I think they'll figure it out. I, think I don't you figure think it out? Yeah, absolutely. But well, are you for Frank Nilakina to remain on the team? Absolutely. I think I think even let's say, you know, as a, as, a, as a backup point guard, I think he'll do a great job. I think his pass first vision is what something that the Knicks really need as opposed to, uh, you know, an offensive first point guard. Uh, I think that is something big that could come off the bench for them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And last but not least, when we speak of Mitchell Robinson, his upscale game as a center, have you heard of a player called James Wiseman coming from the Vanilla Wildcats? No, I have not. But well, you're not aware of his game? No, no, no. Okay, so we're going to pass on that. Gotcha. But Mitchell Robinson, you yes. definitely... Yeah, absolutely. Do you think he's going to be the star center of the New York Knicks, or do you think he's going to need a backup? I think 
He reminds me of David Lee a little bit, back when David Lee was in the Knicks. Okay. Um, I mean, David Lee was a power forward, but I think I think Mitchell has ability to do great things. And I think given the opportunity and the, the chances, kind of building the team almost around him, I think he could be a very dominant center for the New York Knicks. For a dominant center, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I know I said I was the last, but I promise you, this is the nail in the coffin right here, man. I just get addicted to Nick talk, man. <laughs> Forgive me, man. Julius Randle. Was that? Julius Randle. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you was aware of the turmoil in the locker room concerning him and RJ Barrett. Yes, yes, I was. Yes. They, they, and they get along. Yeah. How do you feel? What's your input? Do you think it's something that could be worked out? Because Absolutely. Julius Randle, what, he averages, what, 21 points a game? Something Julius like Randle is one of their star players. R.J. Barrett, the new guy coming in, um, you know, he is the young hotshot. However, I think that when something like that happens, you got to look at the bigger picture and you got to realize that there's a game on the line and there's a team on the line. Um, you know, I think it's nothing that they can't hash out, and I'm hoping they get it together because these are players that are going to be playing together for some time. So, especially, again, just acquiring um, R.J. Barrett not too long ago. So, I, I think they, they should figure it out. And All right, but you together. was aware of, of, of the, the the friction between the two. Yeah, no, I know they didn't get along. Okay, now, do you think that affected R.J. Barrett uh, rookie season as a player, as far as his accolades? I think, I think only because he's a young player, he might have let that sit in his brain a little too long. Um, instead of just kind of putting it in the back burner like the experienced players do and just play basketball. Um, however, it's tough when you have uh, friction with someone you work with. It's, uh, it's tough to get it going. And um, I, I do think that had that not been an issue, um, he could have probably excelled more because that way he knows he has the support of his teammates. Right. But I, again, I do think that R.J. Barrett, being that young, he still has to kind of figure it out somehow how to put those things in the back burner and just play the game of basketball. All right, my man. I want to thank you for your time for coming on Nicovelli TV. It was a pleasure. And we out. Peace. Thank you.